Hi everyone, welcome to today's Fellows introduction from Sturdy Industrial. My name is Andy, representing Sturdy Industrial, a member of Wow Incorporation. Today we'll be introducing the vertical autocraft from Sturdy. The two models we have here today with us is one, the SA300VF and the SA300VL, which I will demonstrate individually. So today's introduction will be in four stages. One, we will look at the overall features of the vertical autocraft. Then we will look at the safety and uh, the safety and the protection mechanism of the autocraft. And then we'll move on to look at how to install the vertical autocraft. Then after the operation and the last will be on the maintenance. So looking at the vertical autocraft here, the design of both models are following in accordance with the specifications assigned by PED and ASME and that they are, in, they are MDDC certified and the performance is in accordance with Class N. Now, the dimension of the 300 series is that we have the length at 600 millimeter with the width at 450 millimeter and the height starting from the handle right to the bottom is in total of 190 millimeter but whereas from the base up to the top cover here is around 900 millimeter and the reason why i point out is that the design of the 300 vertical autocraft is econom economical use for operators when they are actually removing or installing sterilizing objects now the inner chamber the dimension is 300 by 710 millimeter, which comes with a 50 liter capacity. Now let's look at the operation feature of the vertical autocraft. The one, the 300 VF here is a mechanical processor, and whereas there's the mechanical analog and are being used. Now the control panels are very straightforward and simply to operate. First, we have the temperature setting, which for the 300 VF, there is three level of temperature can be set from 118 degrees Celsius to 121 degrees Celsius and 134 degrees Celsius. And on the control panel, we have two analog and then indication light and then different various switches. Now, if we look at the first mechanical analog, is the sterilization time which we can set from 0 to 60 minutes and moving on to the next which is the dry timer analog which we can set from 0 and to 60 minutes and next to it there are indication lights indicating the process of the sterilization from switching on to the power sterilization begins dry and complete and thereafter we have the emergency button, the start button, and the main power switch. And the last we can see here is a mechanical analog indicating the temperature and the pressure of the autocraft. Moving on to the safety feature, the vertical autocraft comes with the pressure overload and heating, uh, overheating safety mechanism. And I have to point out where is the pressure safety lock that are located on the chamber door that in the case of the chamber is about to be open and the pressure is too high, not set at zero, then this will automatically lock and jams the chamber door and not allowing the operator to open. Now let's move on to the installation of the vertical autocraft. When you receive your vertical autocraft, before making sure that they are in the right position, where the area at least was spacing, that from the opening of the chamber door is at least 800 millimeter away from the wall, and that is 800 millimeter away from the top handle and whereas the front and the side and the back leave at least 50 millimeter spacing 
the position, the location where you're going to place your vertical aquacraft, please ensure that the full bearing weight is around at least 200 kg. Once your vertical aquacraft is installed in the right position, now we need to make sure to confirm that the standard accessories are all being received. Now let's look at the standard accessory that comes with the vertical aquacraft. Right, child, the standard accessory comes with a standard basket tray, the top cover, and then we have a clip, and we have the cleaning powder that you use to clean the inner chamber, the instruction manual, and the water bottle to be used to fill the water. And then we have the water exhaust tube that I will demonstrate later how to be installed. This will be the standard accessories for the vertical aquacraft. Anything additional that you wish to purchase, please contact our sales representative. Now let's move on, on to the power and the water exhaust installation. The power parameter for the vertical autocraft is at 220 volts to 240 volts. It's recommended that the power supply is to use 230 volts at 15 amp. The power cable is located at the back and then because due to the power supply recommendation that we're using, we have to connect to a power breaker, which a single phase power cable and the ground cable is available and now demonstrating just to simply connect to a 230 volt power breaker now this would not be connected to a standard wall plug and moving on we have to look at the part the water exhaust tube now the vertical autocraft is a semi-automatic so basically it means that we have to manually fill in the water and manually to release the water once it's need to be disposed. Using the given, the standard accessory, the water tube, simply we connect one end to the exhaust valve. And where's the other end as an outlet that we have to connect either to a sink or to a drain but please ensure that this after all is a contaminated water and that you have to follow the local regulation when it comes to disposal of used water. Now the installation of your vertical autocraft complete. Now let's move on to the operation side of your vertical autocraft. Opening up the chamber door, do clockwise to open up the chamber door. As we turn, release the chamber door handle from right to the top and move the chamber door to the side. Now at the initial start that we fill the water using the provided water bottle, and to notice on how much water to be filled in is very simple. If we look inside the chamber, then we will see the heating rod. So we basically fill in using RO for distilled water. As the amount of water to be filled in is that the water level exceeds the water tube, the, the heating rod, and that means that sufficient water is there. For the initial start of after filling the water, now we're going to place a base cover over the top of the heating rod. Now the base cover also comes with your autocraft. Now slowly and gently place the base cover right over onto the bottom of where the, the heating rod is. But please ensure that because there is quite a sharp edge around the base cover, and make sure not to damage your inner chamber. Now during the process, please do be careful.
Now, once the base cover is been placed, now you do not really have to remove it until maintenance, uh, during maintenance only. Now, once, while as the base cover is there, how to ensure there's sufficient water is basically visually seeing that the water exceeds, covers the base cover. That means there's sufficient water is there. Now, placing the sterilization of object into the steril uh, to the autoclave. Once the object has been placed, simply close the chamber door, ensure it's in the right position, and then anti-clockwise to seal the chamber door. We'll turn the, the handle of the chamber door to a point where you can feel it tightens. However, if we look at the bottom face here, there is an opening, and this opening is designed to be aligned with the pressure safety lock. Now, that means that once the pressure rises to, say, one point, uh, 0 0.2 bar, then the safety door lock automatically activates and the shaft will go in and then in place and holds the, the handle. So that means that if during the, after the completion of the sterilization and the operator tries to open the chamber door, not confirming that the inner pressure has dropped down to zero, the chamber door will not open. Of course, there will be circumstances that we are overturning the handle to ensure it's really, really sealed properly. It's okay, because despite the opening is not aligned with the safety door, safety door lock, the safety door lock will still be activated. So once you turn to open up, then you'll hear a click sound. That means the shaft has gone inside the opening at the bottom base here. Now, once the chamber door has been sealed, simply we'll switch on the power. And first, we'll adjust the sterilization temperature that we are set for. Now, there's three options. One is 118 degrees Celsius. Two is 121 degrees Celsius. And the last one is 134 degrees Celsius. Now let's set at 121 degrees Celsius. Moving on, we will set the sterilization time either from zero to 60 minutes. Now let's set at 30 minutes. Moving on to the dry time, then either we set zero to 60 minutes. And for this case, we will just leave it as 30 minutes. Once your sterilization timer and your dry timer has been set, simply we will just press start. And then the indication light will start illuminate with power switched on, sterilization begins. And when it comes to the end, the dry mode will be in place. And then the last will be the completion mode. Once the sterilization process has come to an end, before opening up the chamber doors, then we have to ensure that the mechanical analog indicating the temperature and the pressure is that where the indicator is sitting at zero. That means now it's safe to open up your chamber door. Now, turning clockwise to open up the chamber door. simply remove the basket that's containing with the sterilized object and your sterilization process has been complete completed. Now let's move on to the maintenance part. The maintenance basically is separate up to four stages. One is the daily maintenance, two the weekly maintenance, three the monthly maintenance, and last, the annual, the yearly maintenance. Now, 
Let's look at the daily maintenance. The daily maintenance is very straightforward. Using a soft cotton cloth that will clean the exposed area, the control panel, the chamber door, the handles, and also the gaskets, and also the basket tray or the instrument that are used for sterilization. For the weekly maintenance will be the combination of the daily maintenance and to clean the waste filter that is located at the bottom, at the back, and also the water exhaust tube. First, let's look at the waste filter. The waste filter is located at the bottom left of your autoclave, where you can unscrew using any form of instrument or tools. After unscrewing the waste filter, removing it, you'll see there's actually a metal filter that can be detached from the base. Using simply just use a toothbrush or and water just clean all the residue that are remain on the filter. Once all the residue and the dirt has been cleaned out, simply place back onto the screw base and then place it back and screw it back on. Now, the waste filter can be replaced or simply just been cleaned or if you really have to replace the, the metal filter, it's recommended you can replace just yearly, once a year. Now moving on, let's take a look at <clears throat> the water exhaust tube. Ensure the water exhaust valve is not being jammed or blocked. There's no blockage and there is no deterioration or damages to your water tube or there's any dirt remains within inside the tube. <coughs> that is your weekly maintenance. Now for the monthly maintenance, it's very simple. It's a combination of your daily maintenance and your weekly maintenance. Plus we have to identify if that's the water sensor or the heating rod has been cleaned and then most importantly is the pressure safety valve that is located at the back. Now to inspect the pressure safety valve, we have to remove the screws, remove the panel and expose the pressure safety valve and where there is a clutch that you actually can pull up and down. And then in doing so to ensure that the safety valve is working properly and it's not jammed. In a case it's jammed, it's recommended not to rubricate the safety valve, but simply replace a new one for safety precaution. Now that will be the monthly maintenance that need to be carried out. Finally, for the annual maintenance that we are recommending to invite our service engineer to come visit to you and then to conduct the necessary inspection and calibration such as the pressure, the temperature and any other component such as the inner chamber need to be replaced, or your heating rod need to be replaced, or there's other space components that need to be replaced to ensure that your autocraft will be function at 100%. That is the annual maintenance that need to be carried out. We do not recommend for your own to take to carry out the maintenance for safety purposes. Now, this is an introduction on the SA300VS. Now we'll move on to the SA300VL. The design specifications, the operation installation of the 300VL is identical as the 300VS. The only differences of the 300VL is that this is specifically designed for professional operators that works in, in the scientific laboratory where they are specialized in cultivating working on argyle, which is a substance used for other experimental purposes. So therefore, despite this is a semi-automatic model, but you'll find more manual operation compared to the 300VS. 
Now, let me introduce on the operation side. First, let's look at where the location of where the temperature fitting is has now been replaced by a water and pressure exhaust gauge where you can adjust from zero up to 90 degrees where the exhaust valve will be fully opened. Now we only use this exhaust valve where we want to replace the water with inside the chamber, simultaneously releasing the pressure. Moving on to the control panel, it's a combination of a digital and mechanical control. Now let's first look at the digital part. Over here, the digital display is the temperature setting. Now, over here, it will be illuminating, indicating the temperature that's currently inside the, the chamber, the inner chamber. And the second one will be indicating the temperature that you are set on. For the 300 VL, we can set from 105, 105 degrees Celsius up to 155 degrees Celsius respectively. And then once the setting has been completed, then we will move on to set the sterilization time with the mechanical analog that you can choose from zero up to 60 minutes. And here next we have the indication light indicating the power has been switched on, sterilization is, has begun and completion. You'll notice there's actually no dry mode indicator because the 300VL does not require any dry mode for the purpose that it serves. Now, same as the 300VF, we have the start button and also the main power button. And I want to point out that for the temperature and the pressure analog, for the 300VL, there's only a pressure analog because the temperature actually is being set by a digital display. Now, I mentioned earlier on, the 300 VR is designed for professional operations. And so when it comes to use to, to relieve the pressure that we'll use a manual exhaust mechanism here, that with the switch that we will release the pressure gradually and slowly by turning anti-clockwise and simultaneously monitoring on the pressure gauge and then once it reaches zero then it's now safe to open up the chamber door for your next operation use please ensure that we have closed the pressure exhaust valve and also the water exhaust valve and this is the operation on the 300 VL, which again, the design specification, safety mechanism, and installation are identical. The only difference is on the operational side. So today, this is an introduction on Sturdy Industrials Vertical Autoclave, the SA300VF and the SA300VL. If you have any questions, please do feel free to contact your sales representative from Sturdy. Thank you and goodbye.